Good morning. How's my family this morning? Hey, we want to thank the band. Y'all do such a great job every time. Nick, I hope you get your voice going again. You bet. <laughs> You've been yelling too much. <laughs> At them cows. <laughs> what I love about Sunday, if you were to take some time this morning and think about it, what would you say you love about Sunday? There's so many different things that each one of us uh, seek on Sundays um, for different reasons. As I've always said, it's like coming to a family reunion each week for me. Each week, I'm provided with the opportunity to join a family of like-minded people to be in praise and worship of the Lord. You know, that's what it means to me on Sundays, along with a, a day of rest that many of us don't take advantage of too often. You know, it used to be that Sundays were set aside for church, church only, rest and families. That's all that happened on Sundays in the past. Families came to church together. They usually had a big lunch right after church, fried chicken. And even after lunch, they would hang out sitting on the front porch while the kids played in the yards or activities were going on. There was nothing more important than church and, and family time on Sundays. You know, I grew up on a farm uh, with my grandfather and grandmother and them. I spent a lot of time with them. And uh, many of us uh, on Sundays, it, that's where we'd wind up out at their house. And she'd go grab that chicken out of the yard and wring its neck and pluck it. Best eating you ever had. You know what I'm saying? It was one of those times. Fried chicken. Look forward to that. A lot of people say, hey, man, we go with a family. I remember as kids, we look forward to to just go into the restaurant after church. Man, we're going to get to go eat, you know, something always. But the family was together, and that was extremely important. And for most people in today's society, Sundays have become just another busy day of the week. With no time left for church or quality time with the family. Can anybody give me an amen on that? Because it goes on, right? That's what's going on in today's society. We've lost touch with what Sunday's all about. And that's why you have more and more people wondering why life isn't working out so well for them. I don't know why my life, I'm going through this, why I'm putting up with this. They're always busy, stressed, in a hurry, and on edge throughout the week. That's what their lives are like. They can't find any peace, joy, and relaxation in their lives at all. And they can't figure out why. Because they're at it every day. Seven days a week, they're at it. They never take time off to rest. Many of you may have grown up in situations in your lives where Sunday was boring or was always a rat race. I know Terry, she, every once in a while we would be riding down the road and she'll chew a piece of gum and she'll take out this little, the little silver thing and she'll make a cup out of it. And I said, what's that about? And she goes, that was my way to get out of church on Sundays because I'd go back and fill it up with water and come back all the time <laughs> and drink that little bitty cup. <laughs> Not much water in there, so she did a lot of walking, amen? You may have grown up where Sundays were a disappointment because it was so supposed to be about be a, be a family day or a day off, and nothing ever happened because the family never did anything together. You may have grew up that way. Our family was pretty good about doing things and hanging out together. Surveys show that as many as 80% of Americans identify themselves as Christians, 80%. But only 20% of Americans attend church regularly. Only 20%. That's sad, and it may be even worse now. I don't know when this survey actually was, but some people may believe that going to church is a bother or it's an unnecessary burden to be avoided whenever possible. Or maybe it's a waste of day used to keep a wife, a preacher, our parents off their backs. We might look at it that way. They just go just to keep peace so they won't have to hear it. Some may attend to score spiritual brownie points with God. Sometimes that's why they go, hey, I got to show up. I got to get my points in for Sunday. You know, there are all kinds of reasons. If this is you, I hope I'm not making you uncomfortable. I hope I am. This is not how God created us to live. It's not. He did give us instructions, 
to follow for a better life. He did give us that. We talked about that last week. We have instructions how to have a better life. And the reasons that Sundays are so important to us is the fact that God made Sundays for us. And some people get that wrong because it says on the seventh day, God rested. Do you think God needed rest? Think about that as a whole. Did God need rest? He's setting the example for us is what that's about. In Mark chapter 2, verse 27, turn with me there. We're going to read it together. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Okay, we back that up. That's clear, right? Anybody doubt that? There it is right there. Many people think that if they can get a, that they're able to get ahead faster. Many people believe this. They can get ahead faster if they're productive seven days a week. They think if I work all seven days, I'm going to get ahead. I'm going to be more prosperous in my life. I'm going to, and things are going to be better because I'm, I'm working seven days a week. I'm putting in the time. I'm doing all this. But that's not true. It's just not true. God blesses those who bless him and hold on to his commands. That's where the blessings come from. You want to get ahead in life, then make sure you're blessing God especially in his commandments and on Sunday. A great example, a great example of that is proven by the most prosperous, prosperous fast food restaurant in the world, which is Chick-fil-A. No one makes as much money per location as Chick-fil-A, Chick -fil even though Chick-fil-A is closed on Sundays. They make more money in six days a week than McDonald's, Subway, Burger King, and Taco Bell do in seven days. Because they're keeping Sunday holy. Right? God's blessing that. And we always say that. God will bless the people that bless him. So if you think coming to Sunday is a burden, God knows what your heart is. He knows what you're thinking. And you know, I know sometimes if you have kids getting up on Sunday, getting everybody together, they hide in the bathroom, they all, they all argue. There's little skirmishes before you get to church or there are problems going on. But the minute they hit the parking lot, they're holy saints. Everything changes. Right? Some of you are laughing because you know it's true, right? I can do anything until I pull on this parking lot and then everything changes, right? Just as God rested on the seventh day after creation, he wired us also to need rest. Not only to need rest, but relational connections and spiritual renewal once a week. Every one of us need to renew and regenerate at least one day a week, especially on Sundays. That's why God said on Sundays we should rest. Any of you remember the blue law? Some of you older people will. Some of you younger people won't. You know, you could buy you could buy a hammer, but you couldn't buy nails, or the other way around. You buy nails, but you couldn't buy a hammer. I think it's the way that worked. It was the blue law. It was so no work would be done on Sundays. They tried to prevent that with the blue law. Our government here in the United States, boy, have we gotten a long way from there. But that was true. To keep Sunday holy, they came up with the blue law. Living Sunday is the way God meant for them to be. That will lead us to benefits that will flow into just about every, every aspect of our life if we do it right. Sundays are meant to be the best day of your week. Wait a minute, I don't know about that. Well, it is. And it was designed for that. And the church ought to be your best time spent on Sundays. The church, worship church, that should be your best time spent on Sunday above everything else. To someone who understands church and what it's really all about, going to church can be the most fulfilling and inspiring thing you do all week long. If you understand what it's all about. Well, a lot of people don't. They think, well, I have to go and I have to give money and I have to give time. And, I, you know, I have to listen to that boring preacher, you know, that kind of stuff. They, they think it's a burden. But it shouldn't be. It should be the best time. It is for me to come and visit with all of you, worship God, hear the stories, listen to the music, 
I mean, we're doing a concert every Sunday morning. You got to pay for that anywhere else, right? We got an old cowboy set out on a horse out there that just blesses us when we come in. We got all kinds of things going on in the church. We have a children's church that, that kids are learning. Learning. They're coming home, and I hear this all the time. They're sharing with their parents what they learned. So I know they're learning things. So why wouldn't church on Sunday mornings be one of the best places to be? Or the very best place to be, to be honest with you. Even King David got excited. He got excited when he was invited to the house of the Lord. King David, of all people, a man after God's own heart, got excited because he was invited to the house of the Lord, to church. Psalms chapter 122, verse 1. Psalms 122, verse 1. David speaking right here. I rejoice with those who said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. He was excited. This was a guy who wasn't turned off by church. He wasn't turned off by church. He got excited when he was invited to go to church. He got fired up about the thing that so many people try to avoid. Do you get fired up on Sunday mornings? Or is it just tough just to roll out of bed? You know, where's your excitement at? How do you, how do you view church? Well, his excitement for attending church was for three reasons. For the praise of God, the people of God, and the peace of God. When these three things are present in our churches today, Sundays will become the best day of our week when we apply all three things. Christians define the subject of worship in many different ways. Each one of us may look at, at worship here in church on Sundays in different ways, and that's okay. But the essence of worship is simply this, giving God the praise he deserves. That's the essence of, uh, of worship. That's what Sundays is about. We're here to praise God. We're here to show him we're blessing him to receive blessings also. Because that's what it says. God blesses those who bless him. To worship is to acknowledge the greatness of God when you worship. When you come in, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You want to hold your hands up? Hold your hands up. You know, you want to roll your eyes around your head? You want to flop on the floor? We'll check on you. We'll check on you. We will. Do it. Whatever moves you, moves you, right? According to the scripture, worship is both an attitude and an action. You can have the attitude, but you got to have the action with it. Amen. If it begins with reverence in our hearts toward God and then explodes into action through prayer, praise and song, and proclamation of God's goodness and grace, man, that's worship. That's when we get excited. Our Sunday service should always be a celebration. And I think it is. I think we do that pretty well. That we celebrate when we come. Now, I notice sometimes in the morning, some of you don't get your coffee in there quick enough. And, and uh, you might be a little bit sleeping over there. The music played at the church here is an important part of worship. We know that. And true worship, we know, is much more than just singing and playing instruments. We know that. But music is a powerful tool for praising God and drawing others closer to Him. So the music is very important in church. The music can affect our emotions and the lyrics swell our hearts, which can cause us to become lost in the experience. Have you ever been there where the band just played that song where you just, I mean, you're just lost in the song? Because of the praise and worship, because of the words and the way it's presented. That's what music is about. That's praise and worship also. Genuine worship happens when we sing praises to God. Whether in church or alone, in your car, in your shower. Anything and everything you can do to, <clears throat> can become an act of worship. When it's done to the glory and praise of God. Cool. I sing in the shower, the dogs leave. That won't work. Right? Now, I ain't singing in my car all day long. People just look at you. They can't hear you. That's a good part. But anywhere you're singing or you're praising the Lord, that's worship. It doesn't matter where it is. 
or what you're doing. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, if you turn with me there. David speaking here once again. Do what? Oh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Sorry. If Courtney doesn't say anything, I don't really know there's anything wrong. <laughs> she keeps me on task. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Once again, David speaking here again. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God, the Father, through Him. No matter what you do. And many times you've heard me talk about uh, the, the man from Walmart. Uh, I can't even remember his name now. He's been gone so long. He was a truck driver, and he became a door greeter at Walmart. And when you walked in, the, in Walmart, you walked through his door, he would say, Welcome to Walmart! Blow you away. And I mean, he was excited to see you. And if you left through the same door, he'd say, thank you for shopping at Walmart. Good to see you. And he was excited, and I watched him do this one day. I just sat over there and watched him. I was amazed at, at how much energy this guy had because he's an older guy. And I went and talked to him. That's how I found out he was a truck driver, and he'd retired, and he took this job on. And I said, man, I, I see your excitement, but doesn't it bother you when people walk in and you do that, and they look at you like you're a nut? He goes, I ain't doing it for them. I'm doing it for the Lord. Amen. Love the guy. He's no longer there. I guess he stayed for quite a while. I don't know what happened, but he, he was exciting. He made Walmart exciting to walk into. It's not like that nowadays, you know, a lot of times, but he was excited. I even think sometimes they, in many of these businesses, and we've learned this, they don't want you, they don't want you showing your joy for the Lord. Businesses don't. And I'm going to tell you what, if you walk into a business that does that, don't, don't work, don't, don't buy anything, don't do anything. Turn around and walk out because you're helping that business to do what they do. We're the ones that need to be setting the example, not all them, right? And we've run into that from time to time. We kind of address it. I make the phone call. I, I, don't, I don't mind at all because that's a problem. And if it's our, our desire to please, uh, please the heart of God at any time, any time, that's worship. When you're ready to please the Lord. It is true, though, that you can worship anywhere, anywhere. But if Sunday isn't a day of worship for us, then the rest of the week won't be either. If you can't worship on Sunday, it's not likely you're going to worship all through the week. But Sunday is that important. Sunday services gives us a time to focus all of our attention on Jesus Christ. Right then, you get everything else out of the way, sit in here, your focus should be on Jesus Christ. You know, if you're sitting here this morning, you're wondering, well, what am I going to eat as soon as he gets done talking up there? Or what am I going to do after church? You know, I got this work to do. I got that to do. If you're thinking that this morning, then you need to get your mind straight. Your focus should be on Jesus Christ. Totally. Without all the worldly distractions in our life. We have enough distractions all week long. And many people, many people, they carry those distractions right on into them in the church service. And they ponder on them. And sometimes they miss the point. They miss the message. And then many times people will come back to work and go, hey, you're standing on my toes. I say, oh, not me. That's God putting pressure on them toes. Not me at all. David offers an invitation to worship by saying in Psalms uh, 34, verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So he's inviting us to worship with him right there. And I know there's many times that people here in the church get really excited here in church service. And it's hard to control their emotions and actions in which there's nothing wrong with that, Cheryl Lombach. <laughs> you just can't control it. You know what I'm saying? It just gets there. And there are many times I see that here in church and there's nothing wrong with that. Because God never intended worship service to be dull or dreary or boring. But the opposite, he wants you to be excited when you walk in here. 
And he wants you to be excited for the Lord. It pumps you up for the rest of the week where you can go into the world after Sunday and say, man, I can handle anything. I got the Lord right here with me. Psalms uh, 100, verse 1. We keep going back to David because he had a lot of good stuff to say. Psalms 100, chapter 1, I mean, verse 1. Shout for, the, for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Be joyful. Be excited. It's tough, isn't it? We didn't have any music. It probably wouldn't be exciting at all because they really get us fired up many times. That's why I like to play videos sometimes. They touch our heart, get us going. Without that, we, we could get a little boring. I know I can. C.S. Lewis writes in the reflection of the Psalms, in commanding us to glorify him, God is inviting us to enjoy him. Amen. Why wouldn't we? If you let yourself be truly immersed in worship, no matter what style of music or the size of the crowd, you will feel God's presence in this place. And it will stay with you when you walk out those back doors right there and carry it with you. If you let yourself get immersed, get excited, don't just sit in service, be part of the service. Amen? It can also be a life-changing experience. And it has been for many, and I can testify to that. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, "He it behooves me, or it behooves us to be careful what we worship. For what we are worshiping, we are becoming. Amen. I believe that's true. Basically, we become what we worship. Have you ever heard the story about the man who became president for one day? A man who became president of the United States for one day. Any of you know who that was? Yeah, that's a tough one. President James Polk spent his last day as president on March 3rd, 1849. And at midnight, Polk was out of office. But his successor, General Zachary Taylor, a staunch churchgoer, refused to be sworn in on March 4th, 1849, because it was Sunday. He said, going to church was a higher priority than becoming president of the United States. He postponed his inauguration until Monday, March the 5th. So for one day, U.S. Senator David Atchison of Missouri was president pro tempore of the United States. One day. Can you think of anything more important than attending church? You probably can. To some of you. But for President Zachary Taylor, there was nothing more important than attending church. I found that story really unique. Sometimes we come to worship on Sundays broken and exhausted from the week. Full of sin, shame, stress. It has been said that the church is like a garbage dump. Whoa. Well, it is. You can dump all your garbage right here at the foot of this cross. And God's going to clean it up and throw it away. Well, it is. That's a good reason to attend. Swiss theologian Karl Barth summed it up this way. Christian worship is the most momentous, <laughs> the most urgent, and the most glorious action that can take place in a human life. I can't even say the words he says. That's terrible. I'm close. No, it's okay. They know what I mean. Rather, we should be here. This should be the place to be. And she, you should immerse yourself in service. I guess the question this morning is, what do you love about Sunday? Everybody's got their own thing, I assure you. But the thing is, it's what God said. It's a day of rest. The Sabbath was made for us, not for God. So it's a day of rest. So if you're sitting here this morning worried about what's got to be done after church, let it go. We all need that rest. We need to re-energize for the week because the world's hard to deal with. The thing about that is, is the weaker we get, the easier it is to let the devil slide in. 
and he's waiting. He's waiting. That's called separating you from the herd. And if he can get you separated from the herd, it's a whole lot easier to get in. When you get beat up all week, you know, you had a tough week and just feel beat up. And, man, I, I don't want to go to church Sunday. I'm just tired. I guess that's okay. But if you want to get re-energized, this is the place to be. I pray this morning that we can all answer that question with excitement. Excitement knowing that God made this day special for us. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. Father, we just thank you for this uh, beautiful day. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. Be in praise and worship to you. Father, we thank you you give us that capability. Father, we thank you for this wonderful building that we enjoy and it keeps us warm and keeps us cool. So praise can be a little bit more comfortable in our lives. Father, I pray that uh, you do make people uncomfortable, Father, that uh, convict their hearts. We all need that conviction, Father, and that we would be here on Sundays and be in praise and worship to you and that it might just give us the rest and look forward to the day. Father, I pray that each and every one that heard this message this morning, that they'd take it to heart. That they would change uh, the way they look at uh, Sundays, Father, and put it number one priority in their lives for you, for their families, and for rest, Father, that it might help them get through the day. Father, we thank you for your presence felt here this morning. We do thank you for the music and the band and how they get us fired up. And Father, we pray for blessings on all. Father, I pray for everyone who walks out this door that they carry you with them this morning and they carry you throughout the day and throughout the week. Father, we love you. We praise you. Give the glory to you. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen.